In this series of videos I'm attempting to repair and restore a PDP 11-34A vintage computer. As part of that process I'm also trying to repair and restore a pair of RX02 floppy disk drives. These are dual 8 inch disk drives and um, again of the time very um, complex, much more complex than more modern drives. You can see there's a huge control card here a huge driver and sense card. I've got the unit turned on its side here just to make it more convenient to work on this board. At the end of the previous video I got as far as uh, rebuilding the first of the two dual drives um, but when I powered it up although the head lift solenoids energized uh, nothing else happened. It didn't uh, home the drives, didn't do anything else. So I started uh, probing around, had a quick look and um, realised there's absolutely nothing going on on the board. So I have worked on these before, but I think they were always connected to a host machine. So I pulled out the schematic, started looking around, and it became clear very quickly, looking at the signals and how they're connected, the incoming signals from this ribbon cable, that without the cable connected to a host, uh, this um, will be effectively in shutdown, it will be disabled. So um, in other words, it needs to host there. Now you could, fool this into thinking the host was there just by fitting a small uh, breakout uh, board with some switches uh, but because I want this to boot I decided to connect it to the host. So I did that um, at that point it still didn't do anything it was still completely dead uh, or appeared dead there was a clock running so there's a 20 megahertz clock and you get 5 megahertz clock signals going to the various devices this is an interesting board. It doesn't really have a processor as such, but um, processing is carried out using a series of ROMs and multiplexers. So um, it's kind of a hard-coded uh, way of creating a processor. Uh, it works very well. It's, it's quite efficient and it's um, in terms of its operation, but it's very cumbersome in terms of trying to fault find on it. They're not particularly difficult to fault find on, um, but they are a bit of a pain until you get your head around the way these are supposed to operate. Now what I found was uh, it was completely inactive, nothing was going on, which in some ways is quite a good sign. I hadn't found a fault with the power supply, so I suspected it wasn't just that every device had been destroyed, that sometimes you get that sort of fault when um, the supplies failed. In this case I suspected it was something similar to the cable not being plugged in, and sure enough I found a 7404 that was faulty that was part of the interface so I replaced that it then would uh, when I booted up with the host connected and powered up it would then initialize it drove the two um, lead screws back to their home position so it appeared to be doing what it was supposed to um, what the setup I have here uh, I'm connected to one of the two uh, SRAM chips. There are two SRAM chips on this to give a 1k buffer for the sector so it reads a sector into RAM on this board and then it transfers that through to the host machine. But I was getting no data um, going into the SRAM even with a floppy disk in the drive. So I started uh, probing around. Uh, the address of the SRAM is controlled through some binary counters and one of those wasn't counting and it turned out it was a, uh, a broken through hole plate on one of the tracks, it wasn't getting a clock signal. So I fixed that and where we are now, I'll just quickly demonstrate this. I don't know if it's reading proper data yet but I've got a floppy disk in the drive. I'm going to power up the host machine and then I'll power up this drive and we'll keep an eye on the scope. I'm connected to the data input pin of the SRAM and if everything's working we should see data flowing into the SRAM. So I'll get this uh, powered up. The host machine is running so I'll now power up the floppy drive. And I'll switch it off again. So as you can see we're getting some data going into the SRAM. I don't know if it's the correct data for the disk that's in there. It's not a bootable disk and at the moment it doesn't really matter that it's not a bootable disk. The next step is I actually want to try and boot from disk, but I can't at the moment, um, or at least I could. In order to boot the PDP, we need a bootloader. So we need some way of uh, copying the data that's on the boot floppy disk 
into the PDP's RAM and then transfer control to that and then it should complete the load process and run the uh, software you're trying to boot. Um, I could type in the bootloader or enter the bootloader through either the user console or through the console emulator um, but it's a it's not particularly long but I don't want to keep doing that every time I switch the machine on while I'm trying to fault find and ultimately I want to be able to boot from floppy anyway so that's the route I want to take. So the terminal emulator that we're running is actually um, on a ROM that sits on an M9312 card that's fitted to the PDP, so that's a bootstrap loader card. It's got one ROM for the uh, terminal emulator, that's the uh, program that we see on the uh, PC, or at least that allows us to communicate with the PDP through a terminal on the PC. And then there are four spare slots, spare sockets on the card, and therefore uh, bootstrap loader proms and depending on the device you want to boot from whether it's an RK05, RX02, RX01 they're different uh, bootloader images and so what you do is depending on the hardware you want to boot to you burn and insert a suitable prom that has the correct bootloader on it and then from the terminal you can just enter a two character code that will trigger that particular bootloader now there were two PROMs in my bootstrap loader card but unfortunately um, neither was for the uh, RX211 card that I'm using. So I pulled one of the PROMs from the bootstrap loader card and read it and it reads fine. This particular one turns out to be for the uh, DX, uh, that's for the RX01. Uh, the one I need is the DY image for the um, RX02. So I burnt a bootloader into a new PROM. These are one-time uh, usable. We can't rewrite them once you've written them. And um, I'm using 74S571s, by the way. And uh, this is now ready to put into the bootloader, and we should, in theory, be able to invoke the bootloader. I'm going to try it with a non-bootable disk just to see if it does anything at all, and then um, we'll try a boot disk and see if we get any further. Now, these images uh, are available online, but there's also a listing for the bootloaders in the technical documentation that you can get, and uh, you can either uh, type them in manually or uh, use uh, copies of the online image. If you want to know which particular uh, proms you've got, there is a number that ends in A9, it's quite hard to read, but that's a code as to what the particular code is uh, within the prom so you can look it up again in the technical documentation there's a table that tells you what each one is um, but uh, I'll get this installed and uh, we'll try booting um, this particular disk as I say it's not a boot disk so I, I don't think it will boot up at least I don't think it's a boot disk um, it's just an old disk that um, I'm not quite sure I got it from now but uh, I very much doubt it will boot um, but at least we should see the drive attempting to do something so I get this inserted We'll get the host powered up, we'll power up the, um, the drive and then we'll try uh, typing in dy from the command prompt of the terminal. I've got my new prompt inserted into the bootstrap loader and um, what I should be able to do now is boot this up and we should be able to invoke the um, bootstrap loader for the um, RX02. I've got a floppy disk in the drive, it's not a bootable disk um, but at least it will allow the drive to go through the motions of attempting to boot. Now the way that the um, emulator works when you try to invoke the bootloader is you type in the character, the two character code for the particular um, bootloader you want to invoke. In our case it's DY. If you type one where the PROM doesn't exist on the bootloader you will be immediately returned to the command prompt so I'm going to start off by attempting to type DX and in theory that should take us back through to the uh, command prompt you'll see it just cycle back round immediately to the at prompt and it's supposed to do that if that works it means that um, it has uh, the bootloader is kind of trying to look for the correct bootloader it's not just using the first one that it finds and bear in mind they do have to be in certain sockets on the bootloader card 
uh, and then if that uh, does what it's supposed to I'll try typing dy and that in theory should invoke the uh, new prom that I just fitted. There were two proms in there, I've taken the other one out as well so now the only one that's in there is our dy um, bootloader prom. Uh, I don't have a fan on the host machine so I have to keep turning it off uh, every so often so it doesn't overheat. Getting close to the point where I need to refit it to its case. And um, so, uh, excuse me if I'm kind of uh, rushing through certain parts of this, but I don't want to leave the host machine running because uh, it will cook itself. I'll bring up the terminal window into the corner of the screen. I will now power up the PDP and we should see that it boots. So as you can see, the PDP has booted up. I'll now power up the floppy drive. And you probably saw it read some data there. What it does when it boots up, it's supposed to reset itself and then read the first sector on the disk. Uh, I'll go now and try typing first DX into the terminal and then DY. If the DY doesn't immediately return to the app prompt, it's trying to read the data from the disk. It won't succeed, of course, because it's not a boot disk, um, but it should at least indicate that it's attempting to read the correct data. So as you saw, when I tried to enter DX, it just immediately returned to the command prompt. But when I tried DY, it uh, tried to uh, access the data on the drive. So we'll try it one more time. Okay, I'm just gonna turn the uh, drive and the host off. So as you saw, when I entered DY as a uh, command into the terminal, it tried to read the floppy disk. We saw some data being read um, through into the SRAM. I don't know if it's reading the data correctly or if that's making it through to the PDP yet, but it is uh, a promising sign that um, it's at least trying to read some data. The uh, last thing I'm going to do in this video is put a, what I believe is a, uh, a bootable floppy disk into the drive and we'll try the same thing again and see what happens. I have what I believe is a bootable disk in the drive. I haven't tried this yet, I thought we'd try this together. And so I'll bring the terminal back up into the corner of the screen. And now I will power up the host. You should see it boots. I'll power up the drive. And then I'll try entering DY into the terminal again and we'll see what happens. Okay, well unfortunately as you can see it didn't appear to boot, that could be for any number of reasons, it may not be reading the data um, successfully, but at least it is trying to read the floppy disks now. So um, that's it for this video, in the next one I'll go through, try and figure out exactly why this isn't booting, it could just be the floppy disk um, isn't suitable, um, but we can start looking at what data we're getting through, see if it's the data we expect and then go from there. We could have a faulty uh, RAM chip. We're looking at the input here, there may be nothing coming out of it, so uh, next thing to do is start investigating this in more detail, and that's what I will move on to in the next video.